going to build a level 5 monk. I've decided to make him a half orc. And I'm not quite sure which um, which uh, build as far as, as his specialty goes. So when I get there, I will decide then. So first things first, um, I'm going to put his stats in. That's the first thing you do. So standard array, just like usual. So I'm going to give him a dex of 15. Um, probably a 13 on his strength. A 14 on his constitution. A 12 on his wisdom. And an 8 on his charisma. So he's not going to be the most uh, friendly person, but he is definitely going to be pretty, pretty buff once he gets to that point. So now I'm going to pick his background. So I'm going to go through the list of backgrounds here. And let's see, we have a cloistered scholar. It kind of doesn't make sense. An acolyte, maybe. Um, bounty hunter. That might be cool, an urban bounty hunter. We'll make him like David Carradine in uh, Kung Fu. Um, Harper agent, nah. Gladiator. That actually might make sense. He initially was thrown into the arena as a gladiator. He gets acrobatics and performance. But performance is based on charisma. So that would kind of suck. So, Far Traveler. Nah, I think an Urchin actually might make sense. You get Sleight of Hand and Stealth. Yeah, it's in Thieves Tools. Yeah, I think that, that makes sense. And he's a half work too. So he's probably an unwanted birth or something like that. So he grew up on the streets alone for the most part. So with the Urchin, you get a Disguise Kit, Thieves Tools, you get Stealth and Sleight of Hand. Yeah, so there you go. And now, let's see. Now I'm going to start building the, um, the race, or not building, but selecting it. So let me grab race, and I'm going to go with half work right here, half work. So he gets savage attacks, he gets common, relentless endurance, and he gets ability score increase and plus one to con. So he has a 15 con, a 15 strength, and a 15 dex. So that's pretty pretty good for a monk. So let's see his class now. We're going to pick Monk. So I am going to go to Classes. Get that ready. Open the class and level up. Drag Monk over to here. So I'm just going to pick the standard one from the Player's Handbook. It won't change anything. I have a bunch of other sources, so it'll still pull from those. Now I get to pick two skills. So I'm thinking acrobatics and maybe athletics. Yeah. So those are his two physical skills. And he got free intimidation for being a half work. So he can just scare you by yelling at you. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to level him up.
So to level them up, all I have to do is drag this little pin over and drop it back in. And he's leveled up to level 2 now. I'm going to take him to level 5, but... Okay, now we have all these things to pick from. Sun Soul, Shadow... Way of the Long Death. Monks of the Way of the Long Death are obsessed with the meaning and mechanics of dying. Wow, that's interesting. Hmm. It sounds interesting. There is Way of the Open Hand, the Drunken Master. You have all these parries. Hmm. That might actually fit. Guy likes to go into pubs, or he used to. Maybe he plays it off like he's drunk, but he's not. The Kensei has a weapon that they kind of follow, which is kind of cool. The Sun Soul, I don't think that really fits him, but yeah, it's just kind of a unleashing energy type thing. Uh, Way of the Shadow kind of gives him spells and. It's almost like a ninja type build. And it's got the secrecy thing. So I think the either the long death or what about the four elements? You follow a monastic tradition that you harness the elements. Let's see what they get. Discipline of the elements. You get to pick one of your choice, what your discipline in. Eh. Sounds a little limiting, so it's not going to be that. I'm going to go with... Hmm. The Shadow's too ninja-like. The Sun Soul's too good. Long Death. Um, let's see. Touch of Death. Kind of like that. So he's not going to be perfectly good. And then, of course... Well, if he was a touch of death, I should have made him an assassin. So maybe I'm just going to go with the drunken master. That makes more sense for him. So he knows way of the drunken master. We can see what you're doing on your computer. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um... Yeah, I don't know what, what you're seeing, but... <laughs> Hello! Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so that is that. So now he has his um, skills all ready to go. He's at third level, and now I'm going to level up to level four. At level four, he gets a um, to pick something for either he gets a feat, or he can pick skill adjustments or ability score adjustments. So I'm gonna do that right off the bat. I mean, I could give him a feat, but they're so limiting. It's like they just give you. I don't know. I just don't feel it on these. Although to have a Mage Initiate, a mobile feat, Orcish Fury. I don't know. It just doesn't seem... Squat Nimbleness might be a cool thing. Yeah, Weapon Master, nah. I'm just going to give him the, the ability score increase. So one in Dex, and I can't remember what other score monks rely on. Maybe it's Wisdom? Let me take a look here. Yeah, full wisdom, yeah. So I'm going to give him another point in wisdom. All right, so 13 wisdom, 16 strength, or 15 strength, 16 dex, 15 con. Not too bad. So I'm going to notate that. Alright, so that's that. He has a bonus proficiency. 
and you gain performance skill if you don't already have it. Your martial arts technique mixes, so that's kind of cool. So let me go back to skills. And yep, performance is already added, so that's cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and level them up one more time. And you get Stunning Strike, you get an extra attack, so it's pretty badass. So 5th level Monk is nothing to, 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 uh, you know, to ignore. So all the skills are done, I want to make sure I got that. I'm going to add his skills, I think I forgot to do this on the last character, but he gets an Artisan Tool or a Musical Instrument. He gets Disguise Kit and Thieves Tools. So I want to go ahead and make sure that I add those. So I click the edit button down below on the bottom right. So there is those three. And then I'm going to have them like artisan tool of some sort. Then make them like a wood carver. So the wood carving is going to be based on his wisdom. Disguise kit. Charisma. And his thieves tools will be decks. There we go. So that way he has his tools ready to go in case he has to use them. It doesn't. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, it it uh, it doesn't come up very often, but it's handy to have those ready to go. And if he needs to sneak around, that'd be handy to have the thieves tools and his stealth and sleight of hand. So he can do a lot of subterfuge. So he has Deflect Missiles, Drunken Technique, which is his martial arts. He has um, martial arts itself. It's just a way that you can describe like how certain monasteries train. So it depends on what he's got going on. Slow Fall. That's nice. So at fourth level, you can use his reaction. Then uh, when he falls, to reduce any falling damage that you take by an amount equal to five times your monk level. So 25 feet or 25 points of damage, whatever that equates to. That's awesome. He has stunning strike, which is awesome. So at fifth level, he can interfere with the flow of key in an opponent's body. That's nice. Unarmored defense, unarmored movement. So with unarmored movement, he gets to increase his speed by an extra 10 feet when he's not wearing armor or wielding a shield. The bonus increases when you reach certain levels. So not until 9th. However, he only has a 30 movement. So I need to go to this area here and add 10. Where it says armor, that means he has you know, more movement speed. Now he has 40. So he's quick as all get out. And let's see. Way of the Master, Drunken Master. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Uh, bonus proficiency. That was the performance skill. We already got that. Drunken Technique gives him a twist and turn quickly as part of your Fury of Blows. Whenever you use Fury of Blows, you gain the benefit of the disengage action, and your walking speed increases by 10 feet until the current turn is ended. That's awesome. So he's going to be pretty cool um, without weapons. Unarmored defense, unarmored, you know, that movement, it's pretty cool. Uh, deflect missiles. He has city secrets. So in an urban situation, he'd be pretty good. He knows the secret pattern and flow to cities. 
So if he's in his home city, or he's been, or he's in a city that he lives in, he can travel between two locations twice as fast as they normally would. That's kind of cool for role playing. And he knows common and orc, so go figure. All right, so let's go to his inventory. Um, inventory is going to be picked from parcels. So I'm going to give him the urchin background to stuff. Which is just a knife, some clothes, a map, pouch, and token. Yeah, the urchin. And then I'm giving the monk gear. So he has some common gear for being a monk. So they gave him a short sword. I don't see him wielding a sword. Um, he has a little knife, but that's more utility. He has throwing darts, so I can see that. Um, I'm going to give him a quarter staff because that's more versatile than anything else. So here's the quarter staff. He has darts and a quarter staff. That, that's pretty decent. I mean, he doesn't need a lot of weapons because his hands are his weapons. So that would be like a backup or maybe like a walking stick or something. It doesn't really need to be his main weapon necessarily. Um, what else can we say? Let me find out. So here's the unarmed strike monk. Yeah, so this is just an item. It's called a weapon, but it's actually just his fist or kick. So it's really not anything he's carrying. It's just so you can add this. So that'll be something that we work on later. And then the regular one arm strike is unarmed strike is just one bludgeoning. So he gets one d four. I'm pretty sure it's a 1d6 by now because of his level. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to bookmark this because I want his class stuff here and his background information. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I have them both bookmarked. So if I go down and read the description of the monk, about halfway down there's some tables. It says at 5th level, yeah, his his unarmed strike is a 1d6. And he gets 5 key points, 10 extra feet of movement, and he gets an extra attack stunning strike. Pretty cool. So let me go to the actions tab, and I'm going to change the unarmed strike. So instead of a d4, I'm going to replace it. So let me grab this D6 first. And that's that. Now I'm going to erase the D4. There we go. So now we get to pick if it's based on dexterity or strength. So dexterity is going to be his base. And for the uh, stat, dexterity. So now what that does is it changes, he gets a plus three bonus to hit and to damage because of his dex bonus. So it's pretty lethal. And then he has 10 darts. So he'd probably use those just to disrupt spellcasters or distraction. And then he has his quarter staff in case he really has to get radical. And this thing is set up for one-handed use. So when I get back to this page, well, I might as well do it while I'm here. So I'm going to click the edit button, click this uh, add weapon. And I'm going to make another variation of the quarter staff.
So there's the normal one. And this is going to be the two-handed use. Okay. So I'm going to add a eight sided instead of the six. So I just made a secondary weapon, but it's really not secondary. It's just another weapon that he, it's just a uh, same weapon, but used two handed. So that way I it can use it one or two handed. All right. And this one's based off of strength. So. I can probably change it to dex, but I think it makes more sense at strength. Um, yep, okay. So there we go there. Got all that, got that. Uh, menacing, it says you gain proficiency intimidation skill. That's already on there. Relentless endurance. It says when he gets down to zero, um, if he's not killed outright, he can drop to one hit point instead. And you can use this feature again until you finish a long rest so once per day basically savage attacks says when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon you can roll one of the weapon's damage dice one additional time and roll and and add it to the extra damage of the critical so what you have to do there is go up here so that would affect this two-handed or this weapon here so where it says weapons, I'm going to click on this, and it said on melee. So there's the one extra damage die that he'll get if he strikes, if he rolls a 20. And that's for being a half-orc. So the next step is going to be to go back to the abilities, I'm going to take a quick look. I got the dis oh, I got to add those to his inventory. So artisan tools, um, disguise kit, thieves tools. Guys, kit. All right, so that should be pretty much most of his gear, and we took care of his weapons, kind of. Um, I'm gonna organize the items here. So he has a backpack and a pouch. So I'm gonna start storing stuff in here. So the darts are gonna go in a pouch. All the tools are going in the backpack. I'm going to put his little knife in the pouch. This thing, if it did any damage, would be like one point of slashing damage. He has a map of the city he's from. He has Python, so he can climb walls. I'm going to give him two water skins instead of just one. This little city token he has, I'm going to put that in his pouch. Now, as you can see, as I'm clicking away here, it'll organize into categories. Okay. 
All right. So that is his gear. I mean, nothing special here. He's got a few things here. Um, Sky's kit, I would probably get him another set of clothing. Or in role play, he can probably take someone's clothes and use his makeup and stuff to kind of change the way he looks. It's going to be kind of hard as an orc, but he can probably pass himself off as a standard orc that just kind of lumbers around. Or maybe he can just play it off like he's really stupid. So that that's uh, kind of interesting. So here's his note. I'm going to make him lawful neutral. i got to make sure that's spelled right. Of course, he's male. He looks like he's in his like mid-20s. So he's 26 looking. He's an even six foot. They're 158 pounds. Size is medium. So now I'm going to open up the, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and open up the background which I have bookmarked already. And if you scroll down, open this up. There's the City Secrets thing. This just tells you, you know, what you get for City Secrets. There's a list here of all his tools and such. And then here's the personality tables. Yeah, he sleeps with his back to the wall or tree with everything he owns under his arms. So he's very paranoid. I don't like to bathe. <laughs> Ideals. Respect, community, change, retribution. People, I help the people who help me. That's what keeps us alive. That's not bad. So that's his ideals. Bonds. My town or city is my home, and I'll fight to defend it. I sponsor an orphanage. I owe my survival to another urchin who taught me to live on the street. That's the one. Flaws. If I'm outnumbered, I'll run away. Gold seems like a waste. Or what? I will never fully trust anyone other than myself. That sounds about right. So that's good. So nothing on the log sheet. And here we go. Here is the weapons. And now I'm going to start adding his monk abilities. So i got to think about this. I'm going to open up the spells first. I'm going to get his monk abilities going. Okay, so I'm going to change this source to Monk. And then I'm going to change it to Class Features. So he has Deflect Missiles. 
He has a key. I believe he has this open hand technique. Let's see. Nope. Doesn't have that. Stunning strike. And he has slow fall. That's pretty cool. Evasion. Find and soul deflect missiles. There he has that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So he gets a certain amount of key per level. So I imagine it said he had five, if I remember right. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. So I'm changing it to preparation mode. It says two out of rest. So that's going to be actually five now. So that's he can use his key. So that's that. Deflect missiles is just a cool way to, yeah, that's cool. There's his key. His slow falling, it says he can fall, reduce any falling damage you take by an amount equal to five times your monk level. So in parentheses, I'm going to put five times five for 25. And to make it easier, for me, oh, there it is. So it's already done. So 25. Uh, stunning strike. Fifth level, you can use key, spend a key point to attempt to uh, do a stunning strike. Okay. So I guess we're good to go. Let me double check here. Slow fall, monastic tradition. That's already dealt with. Drunken technique. So even though that's not really, um, it's basically not, you know, detailed here. I'm gonna go ahead and add it here for a note. So I just put a shortcut to it, and then I go back to this page, and. Putting it in the same category, it says you learn how to twist and turn when you use Fury of Blows, which is one of your key powers. You gain the benefit of the disengage action, and your walking speed increases. So what I'm going to do is put a note on here that says some of this. So let's see. I'm going to add action. It's going to be an effect. It's really not going to do anything mechanically, but it's going to help. Well, I don't want to do this for key. Oops. Um, drunken technique. And it says, and your walking speed increases by 10 feet until the end of, your, of the current turn. So, targets itself, expends once per modifier, on next roll, on next action, pretty much. So that's how I'm going to do that so it doesn't stay on the whole time. So that is that.
So all that does is going to put a note. It's not really going to... Hey, Lady Shell. It's not going to... Um, what do you call it? It's not going to um, do the uh, the same thing that you know an effect will do, but it will put a, a note on there. All right now. Now, I'm going to put standard actions on my sheet for a section. Okay, so there's all the standard actions. Now I'm going to add the racial abilities. So again, I'll make a new section. So I'm going to change this to race traits. And I'm going to look at half work. And here's the relentless endurance. And I've already dealt with the vicious attack. So that's already dealt with. And this is already set up for one use per day. So I don't have to change anything there. Okay. Well, it looks like the monk is pretty much done. I have the skills, all the abilities are pretty much dealt with. Yep, unarmed movement, unarmed defense. So the only thing I could say is it's got a really low AC. So that may be a problem, but if it stays out of the way, it should be pretty good. Let's see, I'll get him a token. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much takes care of his build. I mean, that was pretty quick. It was like maybe half an hour. So that was a pretty straightforward, um, you know, pretty straightforward jam there. Really not much to it. Just have to know all the little ins and outs of the key points. So when you use that character, um, you're going to use your key points for certain abilities. And then also you're going to have um, some special things that you get with your background and such, like the city secrets. I really like that. And, uh, you know, being as a half-orc, he's probably abandoned as a youth. And that would be it. I mean, he's just a, you know, a fifth-level monk that has um, the uh, drunken uh, master technique. And he's probably a loner. But he'll he'll help people when he can. He is lawful neutral, so he's very strict. So um, anyhow, hopefully that helps you with a level five monk. There are other combinations and builds, um, but this was kind of a little bit different, being he's a half orc. So, anyways, um, have a good night, and I'll see you around in the community. Take care, everybody.